Hello everyone and welcome to the early access version of Xplain 12 that is currently available on the xplain.com website for $60 and once you get it, you will get access to it for the full lifetime of Xplain 12 and but it is still a beta you can see the very big beta on the right hand side there to remind us and so we have to take that into account but let's just jump right into it. I've configured my controls, but maybe I should uh, show that. The menu is exactly the same as Xplain 11. If you're expecting anything drastically uh, different, um, that doesn't seem to be the case. So keep that in mind. And so I've uh, got the yaw, roll, and pitch, and everything. The throttle, I've got my separate throttle. Uh, the hat switch has the pitch trim and the roll trim or aileron trim. And uh, I also... Um, I don't know why that is trimmed down. I don't want that. They have a lot of possibilities for you, what you can map, and it's all laid out here, but I, I'm actually looking for none. Do nothing. Yes, that is what I want. Stick priority left. I have no idea why. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm just not going to press those. Um, I thought I had the main trigger. Okay, well, no, it says I've got that. Um, no, oh, I was on the wrong thing. I think I was on. Hmm? Uh, top and side. I don't know why there's a top and side. I'm confused now. I think it's okay. Um, this is the. Well, it doesn't show the picture of it, but it's the SciTech ProFlight Quadrant, and I've got the throttle mixture and prop on there. Um, interestingly, uh, the throttle bottom end is the top end of the throttle. I've already tested this. And in flight, this is actually full throttle and this is low throttle, though maybe that was just a plane I had. So I thought I had to reverse it based on what it shows in the menu here, but it turned out I didn't. So it's confusing. Uh, the mixture and prop are exactly how I would expect it, then I have them reversed, but the throttle was opposite. So anyway, that is the thing, and I'll keep it down for now. And we will fly the basic first. Cessna Skyhawk. So the planes that we have available are Airbus A330-300, the 737-800, and the MD-82. A little bit disappointed that there's no 747. Um, we'll see if we can import things from previous versions of X-Plane in here. I mean, so far it looks very similar to X-Plane 11, so maybe. Um, so yeah, we will, we will see. And the Baron 58, the King Air, a normal Cessna Citation 10, um, or X, uh, the Cirrus SR-22, uh, my favorite little uh, Cirrus Vision SF-50, which actually I found that plane so cute that it got me to buy X-Plane 11 in the first place. Land Care Evolution, I never, uh, or Lancer Evolution, I never particularly liked. Uh, there are other Lancers that I do like. The Piper Super Cub, the Stinson Sentinel, familiar from the previous version, the Vans RV-10, uh, Lancer Evolution is also under here. Uh, I think there are uh, uh, some planes. I think there's technically 19 planes, but anyway, and it's saying 22 because they're in different categories as well. Uh, we have some helicopters, and we do have a glider uh, that those come with X-Plane 11. Uh, I will try the Phantom in this video later because the Phantom was a tough one to fly previously, and I'm going to see how it goes. And of course, I'll try the Tomcat. But let's just get a baseline here. We'll go Cessna Skyhawk 737. Oh, I, I guess I'll do the MD-82 since that's not something I have for Flight Sim right now. We'll try that. And then we'll go F4 and then F14. So that is the plan. And since it has me at Portland, I will go with that. Uh, whether um, the, the, the dialogue is the same as x 11. So mainly, as far as I understand it, uh, a lot of the stuff has to do with the scenery being updated so we'll take a look at how it is but of course it's not going to be you know at the level of flight sim currently they are not going to have all the photo scenery gimmicks the download size is about the same as explain 11 uh, with the full scenery so you can expect that okay says now around frame rates are good I mean uh, considering we're not expecting the crazy scenery we can get in 
Microsoft Flight Sim, of course, we're going to have fairly good frame rates here. Lots of rivets. Okay, back in. I have to remember the keys for here instead of for Flight Sim. All right, my, actually turning my head is a little bit strong, and I think maybe I need to turn the volume down. Various pilot voices are, well, okay, two pilot voices are available. <laughs> uh, who knows about the ATC? Okay, the, the tilde key brings up the menu. All right, uh, the ATC will save for another time. Okay, we are off. Well, this is how Portland International looks. Of course, the selling point for X-Plane is realism. And so that is what they're trying to offer here. Not necessarily the scenery. Alright, let me, while I'm up here, uh, check on the graphics. Texture quality is at maximum. I'm gonna pump up everything to maximum. I don't know why I wouldn't. Well, so this is as good as it gets for now. It is actually visibly choppier right now because I turned it up, though I'm not entirely sure I see the benefits. Let me see what the cause of the, let's say, ambient occlusion quality. Let's say high for that. And shadow quality high. Let's see if that helps things. Well, a little bit on the side of the plane didn't help much. But frame rate wise, it's better. I'll say one thing for this the traffic seems much tamer than in Flight Sim. In other words, the cars aren't trying to go all over the place. Now, if I end up seeing a train, I'll be very happy, but we'll see. Yeah, the traffic behavior is pretty darn good. The map is more or less the usual map. Which is, in this case, a good thing because uh, it's a lot better than the VFR map in Flight Sim. Uh, but it doesn't have as much range. I, I don't actually rightly know where I am. I mean, where's my little icon? I guess th that's it. Uh, it really needs to be a different color to stand out. But yeah, zooming out, that's the limit. So basically, just like it was before, not very long range, but detailed, you can have the, you can get all the information here, like the VORs and such, and you can tune them just by clicking there, per, you know, x 11 as well. Uh, I probably need to manually edit the shadow rendering distance. What's popping in are the shadows for the trees and the buildings. I guess there's probably a configuration file to edit to make sure that doesn't happen so late. Okay, well there's the ATC window now. Request VFR landing. Climate maintained to 1,500. 
I'm trying to land. I don't want to climb though. Whatever. Okay, fine. I'll follow their rules. Climb and maintain. Two thousand five hundred. Two Sierra. Okay. Two thousand five hundred. Well, that's what they wanted. But uh, I'm way too high to land. <laughs> Are they gonna say anything? Yeah, I mean, all right. Gotta say something, Portland Tower. This is your bright idea. Two thousand five hundred. Uh, I don't. I don't think Portland Tower is gonna help me out trying to land here. I am going to stop listening to them, and I'm gonna proceed. Well, the plane handles as I expect it would. But this was a clear weather day. We need to get some weather in for the next flight. And down. I violate, violated ATC's instructions beyond the acceptable tolerance. You may continue flying unaffected by this. However, your ATC services have been cancelled. Um, that's that's fine. I'm, I'm glad I have ATC service services cancelled. Uh, that wasn't working out for me anyway. Alright, anyway, let's not belabor this. Let's just stop it here for now and let's try a different plane and in a different place with different weather. So uh, I think uh, MD-82 would be most interesting. Let's try uh, SFO. It's a shame that we don't have the SR-71 and such in here. Could see what happens if I plop it in and how bad that would be. Who knows. Uh, I don't want customized clear. Mm, I want download real weather. Let's see if that happens. It probably isn't too interesting right now though. Oh, well, it's got stuff going on. Few cumulus. We'll, we'll see how it looks with the few cumulus and those wind layers. All right, then let's just go track real date and time. Should be interesting. And if we customize, this is all the same as it was before. And that is the limit for that, it looks like. Hold over time, that's different. I don't really want that much payload weight. Let's put for more, let's see, max fuel payload. Okay. Let's take a look outside. American Airline livery here. I told it to do some flaps. Oh, there we go. Okay. Here we go. Yep, we are off. It's been a long time since I've flown this one. Alright, let's take a look at San Francisco. That's actually a pretty realistic blue for San Francisco Bay. Don't really see the buildings over there. They're going a little fast. I don't know, in some respects it's smooth and sometimes it's choppy. It's a little bit uneven sometimes. I mean, part of the problem is uh, when it's loading, when the game is loading stuff, it can use a lot of CPU. Right now, it's only using 10, 12% of my CPU. So, 
so that's not optimal. If it wants to use CPU, I mean, if that would help any. Uh, during the loading screen, it can max out the CPU, but during flight, it doesn't seem to get more than one core in, basically. Uh, well, frankly, not the best rendition of San Francisco. Hopefully we'll get some better stuff here. Very repetitive uh, autogen textures here. I mean, a couple of unique buildings. Coit Towers there. Let's see, Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, a little bit dark in the light. Uh, well, I guess that's Alcatraz. Well, I'm not looking to do a long flight with this. It's handling fine, as, as expected again. Cockpit, uh, well, you can see the overhead panel is very good, actually. But I do think I will attempt to land at Oakland, just to keep it simple. I'm still fully loaded, so not the best way to land here, but... 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Okay. All right, well... We are here at Oakland, and I feel like the taxiways need some work. Okay, I'm not going to spend extra time here. See nice little clouds up there. And the plane. But I want to move on to the F4 Phantom now. Okay, we have Miramar. And we will have extra weather. Marginal VFR overcast. Okay, let's go with that. Mm, I feel like I want breaks in the cloud, but large cell thunderstorms. Oh, fine. Let's do that. Still has some visibility, though, which is interesting. So there's the cockpit. Uh, Visual-wise, it doesn't look that much updated, I think. It's been a while, but I mean the textures aren't new. The seat texture definitely isn't new either. Hopefully the aerodynamics are new, because it had trouble before. Uh, this isn't as cloudy as I was led to believe, but it's definitely raining. The wet pavement is nice. Alright, lightning. Okay, well. Water sound. The sounds are pretty good. I feel like this was not a uh, that that was not a that was not a runway. Oh, hmm, interesting, interesting interaction with trees. Guess we wouldn't really hear thunder out there, given our engines. Oh, well, apparently we get that. Uh, I just sort of cut out. Well, that was trying to do. That that needs to loop, I think. Uh, it's just doing a bit and then stopping and then. And you 
here comes again. Oh, this time it's the big war. Maybe it just detected that we weren't supposed to hear it at some point. Oh, seriously hearing it. Uh, that one, that, that's a little bit more legitimate. They heard me. This seems dramatic. I feel like I'm going through hyperspace or something. I like the condensation stuff. That effect is much better here. The afterburner effect is also better than I've seen on any plane in flight sim. It's tough to say what to think about this. Well, we've got weather on the map. Clouds, anyway. Well, let's see if we can go fast and high. I have no I need to check my fuel consumption though. We're only at 20,000 feet right now. We're going pretty fast already. Indicated airspeed 450. Oh, I think we just hit uh, transonic drag because we're pitching down for no apparent reason. <laughs> that. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe we were stalling, but I think that's what we were doing there. Okay, well, it's time to get a mock speed indicator. Let's see, data output, um, show in cockpit, I guess, data graph window, they have, um, mock, uh, I'll just put both there. Okay, oh, no, that's the one I want. I want the one in the corner, per usual. And a lot of the sims... No, not that sim stats. Frame rate, I guess people will be interested in. Times, no. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. Mach 1.34. Sounds good. Yeah, we can probably climb here. That's good enough for climbing. It seems to handle much better than previously, but the real test will be on landing. I don't know what kind of effect we have on those clouds there. The clouds look nice otherwise. But yeah, the distant clouds are not looking all that great. Well, I'm looking to land at Vegas if I can. It's not on the map right now. We've got leads. But, uh, sorry, needles, not leads. <laughs> uh, needles. But uh, we're not close to Vegas yet. But anyway, we're still accelerating and trying to figure out how much we can accelerate. So. Okay, I see Las Vegas there. I should probably descend now. It looks like uh, when you decide to have an overcast, it really gives you an overcast. Uh, Mach 1.75 was what I got up to at 55,000 feet. Okay, we are below Mach 1. And we are in the midst of the rain again. Bit choppy here. Oh. Okay, well, the ground is there. But I can't rightly see anything. Okay, now some buildings are distinct over there. Well, let's see how easy or hard it is to land it. And down. 
<laughs> a little bit hard. A little bit hard, but they didn't tell me my tires burst or anything. Well, I can't see anything anyway. Let's just park here for a sec. Uh, it was certainly easier to fly even than I expected for the real thing, so... Let's go BFR Scattered. And... We will pick up from here. And hopefully we can see what the Las Vegas Strip looks like. Okay, so this is the F-14. Um, mostly looks like what I expect. The HUD's a little bit better than usual. I don't know if there's an A or a D I didn't check. Let me just take a look. It just says F-14, it doesn't say which type. Um, well, okay. Nice livery. All right, let's go. The gear animation is nice. We do have the buildings of the Las Vegas Strip here. This thing really rockets up. What's that purple building? It feels a bit more fly-by-wire than I would expect, uh, given flying the F-14 in uh, DCS world, by comparison. Got some auto adjustment sort of things. That can certainly turn. I feel like it's happier about all of this than it necessarily ought to be. Well, let's take a look at the Grand Canyon while we're here. Well, that's a lot of indicator speed. We should probably hold off on that. Mach 1.4 here. I don't know if I would expect the plane to be able to go this fast, this low, to be honest. Then again, I do have my master caution flashing. Mach 1.5. Indicated airspeed 900. I don't know. I guess we can see about the Hoover Dam. Here's your generic textures for you. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, the Hoover Dam isn't Hoover Damming. Well, I mean, it's it's sort of. It's not really. The bridge there and the Hoover Dam aren't quite right. Oh well. Wow, uh, the frame rates though. Again, just using about 15% of my CPU at most. I, I, I guess it was the cloud. Look at that. It does not like this. <laughs> Yeah, something about this flying through the clouds is definitely not something it's happy with. Hmm. Well, so some improvement needed here probably. I mean, I'm assuming this is not the only place these textures are going to happen. 
not saying exclusively the Grand Canyon, but I mean, just the sort of directionality of the textures is sort of haphazard. Uh, the, the, the stratification over to the right here is good. That face right there sort of has the right feel to it, but some of them are just angled in a weird way. Okay, let's go up dramatically. We have negligible fuel remaining, like, uh, oh, 500 pounds, so I'm just going to try and see where I can stick this. Maybe, maybe even not on a runway and see what happens. We're coming down a little bit fast there. Oh, interesting. Oh, it's trying to show me there. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna try and do an off-runway landing with this to see what happens. wonder what the green lines are on the map. The neon green ones. Oh, that's a lot of trees, though. Are trees collidable in this? Um, nope. Trees are not collidable. We have learned this. Well, these trees aren't anyway. I, I, I've had in uh, flight sim where some of the trees are collidable. Okay, so... But off-runway landing, easily doable. Especially since these are not collidable. So, with this uh, image of the F-14 in the middle of the Arizona... It's not really a desert. Arizona wildlands, I guess. Uh, I'll leave it here and so this was X-Plane 12 first look basically first day it's gone to early access beta so I trust there's gonna be a lot of stuff happening and we will see whether some of the older planes from X-Plane 11 can work out in here so with that thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.